This, this is Monique, man. I'm telling you. Uh, Baby, this... he be saying it like I'm a problem. <laughs> oh, you you have been a problem. Well, Steve, I, what, okay. What was it? Let, 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 let's go. Let's go. You started getting labeled as difficult. Yes. Why do you believe that that happened? And do you see that changing and why? I got labeled as difficult, my husband and I, and my husband is Sydney, who happens to be my manager. We got labeled as difficult because I said one word, and that was no. Now, I said no to some very powerful people. Mm -hmm. I said no to Oprah Winfrey. I said no to Tyler Perry. I said no to Lee Daniels. And I said no to Lionsgate. And the difficulty came in when people that look like me, like Oprah, Tyler, Lee Daniels, and I gotta put my brother Steve on the list. Y'all knew I was not wrong. Each one of you said to me, Monique, you're not wrong. And when I heard you go on the air and you said, my sister done burnt too many bridges and there's nothing I can do for her now. Steve, do you know how hurt I was? But see, Mo, now let me give you this. Because you and I had this conversation, mm -hmm. I thought you went about it wrong. Mm -hmm. See, I felt that you had done yourself a disservice mm -hmm. by the way you chose to go about it. Tell me how I went I, about it. I was cool with you, with your, with your deal with uh, Netflix. Mm -hmm. I was cool with you. The two problems that we had, mm -hmm. number one, the boycott of Netflix, yes. we never gave people a point of action. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we're going to boycott, are we going to not get subscriptions? Are we going to turn it off? Are we going to go down there and get signs? Mm -hmm. The second point, what was coming to me was, this problem that you had in Netflix is rich people problems. Mm -hmm. Cause they looking at us going, you talking about you didn't get millions. Mm -hmm. Well, you got this, you ought to be cool. But when you say, Mo, it's the way you went about it. Mm -hmm. And I want to explain that and I thank you for saying that. Inequality is devastating and it's extreme. And when people said, Monique, do you think calling a boycott was extreme? You damn right. But isn't inequality extreme? So we've got to get to a place where we're unafraid to say it out loud. Okay. What, I would have, what, what I would have loved, what I would have appreciated from my brother was had you picked up the phone before you went on the air and said, Monique, you've burned too many bridges and there's nothing I can do. See, I would have appreciated had my brother called me up and said, baby, let's talk. Because you doing that was a part of me being difficult. But not before that, though. Yes, baby. Remember the moment on stage. Oh, yes. See, now that, that, that right there. That was a wonderful moment, Steve. No, it wasn't. Oh, moment. my goodness. No, it wasn't. That was one of those moments. See, no, like, it wasn't. That Richard Pryor whispered in my ear and said, say it. You say it. Richard because Pryor did not I'm gonna tell, tell you, you to say that. Yes, he did. Oh, hand. baby, yes, he did. Yes, he did. I do not regret, as I said on the Steve Harvey show, I do not regret one moment of that night on that stage. No, no. no in case you don't know, it's too Finish. Mo told I want to hold Tyler Perry, uh -huh. Oprah Winfrey, Tell him. and Lee Daniels mm. to suck her private parts. Not my private parts. Well, you said if I had one, yeah. I want them three to suck my private parts. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> private parts on stage. So now, then I went, <gasps> I quit breathing. I quit breathing for you. I didn't. What happened to you, Mo, yes. was when you made that statement, yes. the narrative got flipped. It wasn't about Netflix no more. Mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't about Netflix no more. The tension was all off that of where we needed Netflix. to go. Huh? That was before Netflix. So good. So now when you bring up Netflix, it don't get no win, but you didn't just say this to these three people. And these three people, yes. not because they're powerful, mm -hmm. but because of who they've come. And what happens is, I told you, we can't cure darkness with more darkness. I got what we you. can do is cure it with comedy. And what I'm not gonna do, Steve, I'm never ever gonna waver from my comedy show on that stage. That's my gift and that's my freedom. And what happens is when you allow people to start taking your freedom and your gift and making it become what makes them comfortable, we then lose. When you called me with the morning show on the phone, I said to you, Steve, my family is suffering behind this. And y'all know I did nothing wrong. Y'all know my husband did nothing wrong. But none of y'all in real time, in real time, was strong enough to go publicly and say, we can't throw our sister under the bus. Because, Mo, listen to me. 
We fighting two wars here. What war? We, there's two wars. It's what your issue is, and it's what the perception of the issue is, and the narrative has changed. See, I'm hearing what you're no, saying, no. baby, and I agree with it when the narrative changes. But if all of y'all said, this is the only issue I have with it, baby, when all of y'all said privately, to include Oprah, all of y'all said privately, we, I've done nothing wrong. When you tell the truth, you have to deal with the repercussions of the truth. We black out here. We can't come out here and do it any kind of way we want to. Let me, Listen oh, to me. Your husband yes. can't be the Sydney that he really is out here. Let me tell you They're something. Not, that flexing, Let me we got to flex something. a different way. We Let out me... here in a game. This the money game. This ain't the black man's game. This ain't the white man's game. It's this is the money, the money game. game. But I, we in the money something. game. And We're you cannot sacrifice game. yourself. The we best are. thing you can do for this poor people is not be one of them. You cannot help them. We're in the money game. Home. But let me tell you what the game is before the money game. Like before the money game, it's called the integrity game. And we've lost the integrity worrying about the money. But, Mo, and wait a minute. if wait I a minute. crumble, if you my crumble, children crumble, my grandchildren crumble, I cannot, for the sake of my integrity, stand up here and let everybody that's counting on me crumble so I can make a statement. There are ways to win the war in a different way. We got more right after this. Ugh. <sighs> okay, on to the next video. All right, I'm back here with my sister Monique, and uh, we're getting real. Okay, Mo, so listen to me. Here is what I want you to understand about this whole thing. Yes. As we try to come through this, because what I want really is for you to come through, because I know who you really are. And so what I, what I want you to do is come through this with a different way, because you, Monique, you my girl. I love you like a sister. I hate what's happening to you. I hate what they're saying that's not true. I want them to know that you are caring, that you're a great mother, that you are incredible talent. I don't like the fact that you've been blackballed. You can be unblackballed. You too talented to have to worry about all this, where the next one coming from. I want this to end for you. Well, listen. I want it to end for you, Monique, because I love you. Because these people are doing it the wrong way, and you better than that. You are better than that. I probably should have called you as soon as. But I didn't. I got a lot of stuff going on. I understand. So I didn't. When I did call you, I listened to you. But I began telling you at the very beginning, I think we're going about this the wrong way. Now, we keep saying stuff in the interim that keeps just making it worse. Hollywood know you talented. But it's making it worse for who? It's making it worse. For who? Okay, if you think it's cool, then it's cool. That's what I'm saying. But it's me, not baby. cool, Mo. For who? It's not cool. For who? The fact that we sitting here arguing like this. We're not arguing. Okay, we're, we're discussing. You, you and your sister, we having a conversation that mommy and daddy ain't right. here right now, cool. and I'm gonna punch you in your mouth. Right. That's the conversation. Bam, bam. Right. I think what happens, though, is I've had to understand how to agree to disagree without being upset. And that's the thing. I disagree with my brother. I'm not upset with you. I love you. I disagree with the way Oprah, Lee, and Tyler did it. Cool. But I love that. I'll give you that. Now, guess what we need to do need? to move forward and fix this? Come on. These people owe you an apology. You owe those people an apology. <laughs> then we can move forward. Mo, listen to me. You are valuable to us all. You are valuable to Tyler Perry. You are valuable to Oprah, to Lee Daniels. We can't do this without talent. See, me and you, we talent. They can't do this without us. You take us out of Hollywood, they have to close some doors around here. It is not the same without us. Yes. You are too valuable. I don't want to lose your gift to the world. You won't. Because we are trying to prove a point when we can prove the point by doing it in a more loving way. That's all I, I want, Mo. I absolutely agree with you. 100%. The only way I know how to do it is loving. Okay. Because that's all that's in my heart. Okay. Now, when I say it, you may not like how I say it. That's, but see, if it's in your heart, yes. love sound like love. Yes. Yes. See, that's what... Love so yes. so if it don't sound like it when you say it, See? that's cause it ain't. So this is what we gonna close out like this. I'm gonna try and arrange 
I'm gonna do my best to get the conversations that need to be had between you and these people so you can hear from them. I'm gonna then ask them would they say it publicly for the benefit of everybody so you can get the release that you need. Then I'm gonna ask you to tell these people and apologize for the, some bashing you done done. I know you don't think you did none, but you did. And when everybody can come to that, then I think there's a chance for us to move. I love you, Mo. I'm glad you came to see me. Looking back on it, I should have picked up the phone and called you more readily. I appreciate it. I would, I, I probably should have done that. Thank you. Just looking on it, that's probably what I should have done. That's all I wanted. But I didn't. So now I'm here and moving forward as your big brother. I just want to help you, Mo. I swear to God, I didn't come here to bash you. I love you. I wish you well. And let's heal this thing and move forward so the world can see how great we all are. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. The one, the only, that damn Monique. Don't fuck up no damn Monique. Don't fuck all up in your gut. <laughs> I love you, Mo. Thank you. All right, baby. Hey, everybody, I want you to catch her residency. Where's she going? <laughs> I want you to catch her residency at the SLS in Las Vegas. We'll be right back. Oh my goodness. Okay, that was a lot. You know, I'm going to look for one more clip to show you. Now, money means nothing to me, nor boxing, when it comes to the freedom of your people. So everything I'm doing, if it means hitchhike tomorrow, if it means be raggedy, if it means look for a job, I'll be happy because I can go to bed, my conscience is clear, and I didn't sell out or trade my people just because I could be rich in Hollywood with a yacht out here on my... That could be my yacht right there. I imagine it's valued at 200000 but I wouldn't want that damn yacht if I couldn't go back over in the black neighborhood and protest a black woman being raped. The hell with the yacht. The hell with the championship. So I want the people to know this, you understand? Okay. And one more clip. For four million... I'll be all the motherfucking monkey you can stand. I, black people, will be so embarrassed by my motherfucking performance, you'll be sitting up there just going, look at this big lip, son of a bitch. You ain't got to act like that much of a motherfucking monkey. Be picking shit off me looking at it. Be walking around that motherfucker. I be digging in my ass, motherfucker for 10 million, kiss my ass, motherfucker, I am a monkey. Motherfucker, I swing in on the vine to work. Okay. Okay, well, let's talk about it. First, I want to say thank you to all of the people who sent this clip to me and kept sending this clip to me. I had to take a little bit of a break um, just to kind of rest myself and do some self-care. There were a lot of heavy topics we were talking about lately, but let's jump into this. I want to say a thank you to the person on Instagram who had that Steve Harvey clip on his profile because that was the piece that just brought everything together for me. I will admit when I first saw the, I saw a little snippet. This was my first time seeing the whole clip of, of Steve and Monique on the show. But when I first saw that first clip it, I did call him the, the C word that ends with an N. I did call him that because he was just acting so foolish. And I'm like, he there he is an OG in the industry and remember when we saw that Nick Cannon video with Riza Islam and I was like these are our leaders and there's just so many thoughts that are just running through my mind the very second thing after I called him the C word the very second thing that came to my mind was you know somebody has to be the first one to stand up and be like you know what this is not right. I'm going to stand up for, for what's right. And there he is talking about, there he is talking about the best thing you can do for the poor is not be one of them. Come on. And then he talked, and then, no, not be poor. Then he talks about this is the money game. Just basically forget integrity because there are so many people 
who are leaning and depending on him. And you know what? This goes back into the whole thing because you all know that I am not a fan of the way Steve Harvey has presented himself and the ways that he, his history, where that he, is that he comes now and the conflicting things that he has said and continues to say without any type of clarification or without any type of resolve or resolution about how he is saying one thing and doing another behind the scenes. We talked about that when we talked about how his child's mother and the things that he's doing with his child and, and, and all of that stuff that's going on over there, how he left his first wife in squalor to go and with children, left her in squalor to handle it all with children while he went out living in a car to, to, fulfill his dream. Meanwhile, he had created human beings in this world. So this all just brings it in full circle about the lack of integrity that I have always felt coming from this human being. Let's look at some of the other things. He was like, oh gosh, he wants this to end for her. So he's basically there beckoning her on this show. Just let it all be over. Just let it all be over. Do what they want you to do. And then the part that really just kind of sticks out is that he wants her to say an apology, even if she doesn't feel it. And that's the part that just really, I remember when I lived in Japan for a year. In, in Japanese, there are all of these different types of apologies. Simasen, gomenasai. Um, they're just, there's so many, there's so many of them. Onegaishimasu. There's so many different types of ways to apologize. And I, I remember when I first learned, um, what this, what the, what the waitress, I don't remember if it, if it's the term irashemasen or what it is but i remember i went to this 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 japanese restaurant and they were you know hollering out these things at me and the and the server came over very quickly and the person explained to me oh the the server is apologizing for not having already been there helping you sooner than than she had humanly possible been able to help and so basically, there's a lot of different words for just apologizing, apologizing for existing, apologizing for not existing fast enough, apologizing for not existing slow enough. There was just so many different types of apologies. And what ends up happening is that the apologies really, they have no real meaning. They're just words. How dare Steve beckon this woman to give an apology just for the mere sake of giving it. We're not three years old where our mothers are like, now say sorry, even when you're not sorry and you're just there like, sorry. I mean, who, who is that going to do any good to? Why does, why would anybody want, an, and the, see, this is where it comes from his mentality. Why would anybody want an apology that you don't feel from your heart that is just given as, as a as a what a sacrifice i just I, I just i don't understand and it's like when i think about remember when i said inside that video i was like we we're the we're the matriarchs now we're the elders when i think about where it is that we are right now and all of these people, all of these people who have had their hand in the industry for all of these decades, when we look where it is that we are now. Remember, there were people who came before us. We're the ones who are now here looking around like, okay, so where's the production company? Where's the, where's the banks with the loans and the credit unions that will help us be able to pool our money? Where's the instruction? Where's the land? Where's the grocery stores? If you haven't, go to Netflix and watch this Killer Mike series called Trigger Warning. It's amazing. First episode starts with trying to spend money in black owned businesses. And it's like 50 years later, what have our elders done? And listen, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Because the first thing I thought was calling him the C word. Second thing that I thought was somebody has to be the first person to stand up and be the sacrifice. Somebody has to be that person to have in integrity and stand in their truth. Someone has to be that person. And then 
the the fourth thing that I thought was a part of me agrees with a part of what Steve is saying. Because, but not the integrity part. Because in the same way that somebody has to be the first person to sacrifice, somebody also has to be there in the game with representation. Because one of the things that I happened to see um, after I saw this clip was the trailer for Ma, which is a movie being, I don't know if you all saw that though, the woman who was in the help, the one who made the feces pie, she's coming out in this movie where she's playing this deranged woman who starts terrorizing these young kids, so these young mix, a mixed race bunch of kids, white, different races, right? And I think mainly white, though. She starts terrorizing them. And so this is like a th psychological thriller, kind of horror movie kind of thing, right? And then remember last year we had Get Out. So yes, so it did take people. It took the Hattie McDaniels, who I believe was Juilliard trained. G correct me if I'm wrong. But she was she was trained. She was classically she was a classically trained actress, but yet she was playing those oh, muscle. Oh, oh, oh. She was playing those type of roles. But it took her kowtowing to the Caucasian man. It took her playing those roles. It took the the Amos and Andy. It took these people putting their foot into the door for us to be where it is that we are now. But then on the flip side, one of the things that, that was in this Killer Mike documentary was how when we had, when, when we were segregated, we had a lot more businesses. We had a lot more entities in which we supported one another financially. And of course, there were a lot of different things that we created like the Black Wall Street and all of this that these jealous people went and burnt down and attacked and all of those things, right? But where would we be right now if instead of, because I'll, I'll say this, I remember when I was a child and Tarzan and these types of shows like Tarzan were on. And I remember seeing Black people acting the damn fool. Well, ooga, booga, ooga, ooga. Just acting the doggone fool. And I remember feeling the shame that I felt. You know, this is why blackface is so bad. Because blackface was made to demean, demoralize, and dehumanize human beings. To make them look worthless and seem worthless. And so they put on this ridiculous costume this cork black face with big white and then eventually red lips and it was made specifically to reduce the empathy for a group of people to reduce the humanity of a group of people and so I remember when I was a child and I used to see those the the black actors in movies like Tarzan who were just acting really dumb. Even I as a child could see that they just, they were, it was embarrassing to be associated with them. And so on the one hand, yes, there were doors that were opened, but how many hearts were broken? How many spirits were crushed in the interim? And then we have a person like Muhammad Ali who said, who spoke his point about integrity and where it is that he ended up in history and what it is that he was willing to do. He went to prison not to go to Vietnam. He went to prison and spent the better part of his youth behind bars. I don't know how many of you know the Muhammad Ali story that when he came out of jail, he didn't even know if he would still be physically fit enough to be able to compete. But he got into fitness, he, he, he got back into it, and he went on to, to change history. Somebody like, like Steve Harvey talking about he'd be, for, for $4 million, he'd be the best monkey picking stuff, swinging and all of this other stuff, and saying that he, black people would be embarrassed by him. You know, on this note, I'm going to get out of here. I have so much more that I can say about this, but I don't want the video to be an hour long and I'm not going to go off and, and start and start ranting. This whole situation is just heartbreaking. 
it's heartbreaking because Steve Harvey is sitting there talking about, we need you, we need your talent. We need you to conform to the way that this system wants you to conform. Instead of him, with all the money, look at with all the money, with all the money that his black ASS got from being all types of monkey and lack of integrity and all of this, with all the money that this man has, there's nothing inside of him thinking, oh, let's make a production company so that your voice can be heard. Let's make black flicks so that we can have a platform that will be able to pay you what it is that you deserve and that you're worth. Since he's in the industry, he has connections. He's been doing this for umpteen decades. And still, still, I'm like, you know, and this, listen, there's a part of me, I want to go to Nigeria. I honestly, I want to go to Nigeria. I want to go to Lagos and talk to some producers out there about producing a show. I'm tired of trying to tiptoe around the way that things are done here in this country with all of the misogyny and the, the racism and the, and the conformity. When I see things like Nollywood and Gollywood and I see black people with Negroid features doing the doggone thing and not being relegated to being the Ooga Boogas and the, and the Dindus. I just, I mean, for how long did, so I was saying, so yes, so it, it took us putting our foot in the door as much as our foot was getting stepped and stomped on for us to be able to come out with the get outs and now this thing ma and and all of this stuff right but however you know they have entire i remember it, it first dawned on me when i was watching a nollywood movie right I was watching a Nollywood movie. This must have been in in the in the in the mid two thousands, right? In the like two thousand and eleven or so, because I remember it was after a long night of TKO skin, and I was I was back there. I had a little cubby area in the back of TKO skin, and I was sitting there. I decided to watch a Nollywood movie, and there was a woman on the set who looked like me. She had a broad nose, full lips, and she had Negroid features, unapologetic. She had this big afro. She was beautiful, right? And I thought about how her look, she would never have been, you know, a main character. Remember when, 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 what's this guy's name? Dr. Dre and them did the, the casting, how they had the A girls, the B girls, the C girls, and then the D girls were, were black women, or darker skinned, darker complected black women. But the A women were like the white women. The B women were like the mixed women, the C. And it was like, it just, it went down on this hierarchy. And I'm like, what would we be like? Where would we be right now if our elders created systems in place for us instead of worrying about stepping and fetching? I'm sorry. I just, I want to hear your thoughts because I am, I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted because, you know, so many of us, like how, like how Drake was like, listen, if your, if your stuff is selling and he went to collect that Grammy and they cut his mic off. He was like, if your stuff is selling, you don't need one of these to prove. I'm like in the era that we are in right now, like Monique still brings, she brings in numbers on her Periscope. She brings in numbers when she goes live from her own phone. You know, it's like people like Issa Rae, who started on YouTube just like us with the Awkward Black Girl series, and she brought in the numbers. And you know, it's like now that I've started, now that I've come into this, this, this new existence and my numbers are up, you should see the offers that I'm getting behind the scenes. And I'm like, as long as you're bringing in the numbers, you're bringing in the numbers, you're bringing in the eyes, you're bringing in the human bodies, you are a force. You are someone to be contented with and you will get the attention. So it's like, he's over there talking about how wonderful and all this stuff is. And then he was like, you're making it worse. And she said, worse for who? 
And that's true because she's making it better for somebody. But Steve Harvey can't see that. But I'm like, what would this world be like? What would the NFL be like if these people had integrity and was like, you know what? For no amount of money, am I going to allow X, Y, Z? First, they didn't want us in their leagues. And now we make up 70% of the leagues. But where's the unity and the solidarity? Where is the union? So that people, so that they can collectively bargain. So that they, they're not getting taken advantage of by these owners. Why is it that, that they are segregated and separated from being able to be owners? And I think that stuff like that needs to be looked into. So we got Steve Harvey over there wanting this woman who is standing firm in her integrity. And she put up a post, some, some of you have it, where she, was, where she put up the definition of sellout. She posted it about Steve Harvey. Well, we have this woman who is standing firm and strong in her convictions. And with all of that money in, on the stage that he was on and in his phone book, with all of the money and contacts and influence that's in his phone book, he's still asking her to bow down? I, d I don't understand this. I, I want to hear from you below. I Honestly, I need to hear your thoughts. I need to hear what you have to say about this. Let me get out of here. So listen, Tanya TKO, go out there and love one another, but most importantly, love yourself. And loving yourself is, even with that type of peer pressure, even with somebody who is working and getting accolades and getting the claps and all of that, when they come back and they ask you to do something that in your spirit you know you don't feel to do. Love yourself enough to stand in your own convictions even if you have to stand alone. I just, listen, Tanya TKO and I'm out. Peace.